Support for this podcast comes from United Healthcare, committed to giving more to small business owners, offering competitive rates with dedicated service in Philadelphia. Employees can appreciate value-added features like virtual access to behavioral health specialists and a walking program that can help reduce their out-of-pocket costs. Get more for your healthcare dollars. Visit uhc.com backslash PA get more. United Healthcare Insurance Company. Administrative services provided by United Healthcare Services Incorporated or their affiliates. Welcome to the war room. We got Ted, Kill, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. How you want to end up one or two hours show to keep the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level. Roll with the topic, sort of like the rubber when it's game time. They like the fat five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and greats. The 4 for 26, so the war in Kuwait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys diversified and educated. What up, everybody out there in War Room land? You are once again live in the War Room, War Room Sports on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts, Dev McMillan. I'm at the round table with my brothers, Jimmy the Blueprint and B. Austin. There was a lot of hoopla on NFL Sunday that had absolutely nothing to do with the actual games on the field. So we'll discuss it all in detail, as well as the blockbuster deal and signing in the NBA this week. So keep it locked right here. Make sure you join us right now on the JW Really Filthy Channel. Real, I'm so sorry, the JW Philly Realty chat room. Say that three times fast at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room, or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at war room sports. You can also call us directly in about three minutes when we open up the digital extreme tech hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. During the week when we're not live on the air, we just ask that you guys be sure to check out the war room sports podcast network. Besides our own podcast, The War Room, you can also listen to great shows such as The Broad Street Line with Roy and Chris, The Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Show with Phil Maddock and Savad, John Appetit, if you like to eat with the Burtons, On the Couch with the Wilsons, if you love TV and movies, uh, Cover 2 with McMillan and Purdue for all you NFL football heads, By the Hood with Jimmy the Blueprint and Corey Camp, if you want to know how to get your money right. And Race Haven Radio with Dr. Scott Speed. Those are the conversations that need to be had. So we're glad they're being had, especially on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Just visit warroomsports.com, click on the WRS Podcast Network tab, or go to our free mobile app on Android or iOS and click the network tab there. What up, brothers? I guess we got to have a quick moment of silence for the greatest pimp in the history of the planet who is gone. At the age of 91, he's gone on to that big brothel in the sky. Shout out Hugh Hefner. What's going on, brothers? Yo, um, can you hear me, Dev? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, yeah, because I, I was going to um, have some Hugh slander um, about how he he's nothing for Black Lives Matter. But at the same time, though, I can't really do that because as a young man, um, you know, he, he helped me to uh, come into my manhood. Through his uh <laughs> his his magazine, so I can't slander the man. You know what I'm saying? Like um, I can't. So black lives do matter. He's been lot for yo, black cause... lives. Hours. Yo yo he, yo, I mean he has some sisters in there. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, classy. And believe it or not, though, which is here's something else funny. As, as someone he had who, a couple um, people we know in there, yo. Shout out to them. Yeah, absolutely, yo. Nipples with no nah, man. Listen, but uh, what I can say is this though. Um, the one thing about his magazine. People don't talk about it a lot. Um, is that yo? There was some great journalism. There was some great uh, writing in Playboy. And when you would tell somebody that, they would look at you like you're crazy. Like yeah, you got there for the uh, for the articles. But no, right. it really was though. You know, because I you know, really I didn't was. realize the level of writing in Playboy until I was at least in my mid twenties. Like you know, you know somebody would write a sports magazine? article. If somebody would write a sports article or something in Playboy or or an article about money, and you're, like, surprised, like, yo, they have actual <laughs> journalists in this joint. Yo, but yeah, nobody really ever cared. The listening to are corny. I did not read a thing in Playboy. I didn't even read advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> you, just got, you just got your magazines nice and sticky, huh, Paul? Yeah, I'm sticky wicky. You already know. You ain't reading advertisements. Come on, dog. You ain't go out and buy, buy a brand of condoms because you saw it in Playboy? <laughs> he don't wear them. 
I've been part of the no comments game for a long time. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talking about yo, yo, crazy man. Yo, please don't don't follow what I do in life. I'm very lucky and blessed to have only had three. Yo, it's 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 it has been one of the crazier weeks that I can remember in sports, especially since like yeah, back to back to us. Yeah, yeah, especially. Especially in this time period where, you know, we, you know, are obligated to talk about sports every week. You know, we've, we've seen some crazy things over the past seven years or so, but, you know, it, it probably hit a, a, a boiling point for a lot of people this past week. But we're going to talk in depth about that in a few minutes. So before we do, we got to pay some bills. Hot Topics are brought to you by Sports the Book. Tired of reading the same old sports book with the same tired old sports lists, rankings, imaginary starting lineups, all sorts of subjective information being passed off as facts. Well, be sure to pick up your copy of Sports. Check the acronym. Smart people only read the sports. Bars. It's a mixture of sports and hip-hop culture. will keep you on the edge of your seat and laughing like you're watching a comedy special or listening to a hot 16 from the latest thing out. Shout out to Rhapsody. Um, Five. Go to sportsthebook.com Or get your copy from our website At warroomsports.com But whatever you do Don't miss the, the, the movement and Speaking of Rhapsody man Verse 2 and you should know Come on yo Come on. Yeah she ridiculous with it like, There's not too many dudes right, so, so, spazzed so, Like she spazzed in that song Gene Gray, <laughs> Rhapsody, or Lauren Hill Go Who is it? Who's who's the queen? Come on, I ain't doing that, man. You disrespectful to everybody. You just said, man. No, you about to start. Well, here's a, the thing, right? Thirty minute conversation. <laughs> I'm just gonna be fast with it. Jean Grey. I I never thought I would hear a female that can even compete with Jean Grey. But Rhapsody is on. Um, she made a uh, she got a seat at the table of gods. Jean Grey's pen is from a different planet, and Lauren Hill has like what, what we would call the magnum opus. Like her, that one album is going to kind of like solidify her. She didn't have a chance to fall off, so. You can only judge yeah, on that one more. off that album right now, like 20 years later. And that later. shows you how fire it is. You, she tore 20 <laughs> years later off one album. Like, come on, cuz. Lauren, Lauren is a man. Yo, to our listeners, I apologize because I knew what this would start. Cause my brother I'm going to stop, though. I'm going to chill, though. I'm, I'm just going to put like this. Merch. I'm going to tell you this. Yeah, he he reminds me of Lauren. She just can't sing. When Lauren would rhyme. <laughs> yeah. Yo, the crazy part is. Yeah, but all, all I'm going to say is this, though. Table of Gods, man. I, I put the three you just named, uh, B. Austin, and I'll probably throw MC Light in there. And mm-hmm. that's probably, what about that's probably Bahamadia? It. No, she there you go. That's, that's the table. Oh, but, oh, but her, <laughs> bars make up for, her bars make her attractive. She's that nice. Dude, she was, no, um, she looked like Craig Mack. Yo, but that's what I'm saying. Her, <laughs> bars, is so nice. her bars is so nice. Yo, yeah. she was so far ahead of her time. There you go. They go, they go, they go to my five of the table of gods. You just named the Bahamadia. They ain't going to put Link you <laughs> She looked like Uniblad. All right. A shout out to Yo, Philly's no finest. slander. PSP, man. <laughs> Philly's finest. PSP, man. PSP. All right, but look, man. Y'all know what happened in sports this week, man. Y'all president, President Donald Trump had some 45. bars for the NFL in a speech in Alabama. This is the thing, though. Like, President Trump, He's, he 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 loves the attention so much. Like he still goes around doing like campaign speeches, even though he won a long time ago. Like when he, I guess when he hears like his approval ratings and he hears people complaining, he just schedules a speech so he can go out get at his base that's gonna love him either way, and he can hear those cheers and those chants. I think it's just his ego, man. Like because I don't understand what some of these speeches are about and why they're being made. Yo. But anyway, in a speech in Alabama. He says the following. He says uh, <laughs> he didn't reference any player by name, but we all know the movement that was started by former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick. But he, he, he basically encouraged fans to boycott the league over the protests. And uh, he stopped to ask the crowd. He said, wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, Get that son of a bitch off the field right now. He's fired. Crowd goes wild because he knows who he's talking to. He knows who his base is. Knows the audience. Knows so, the audience. Got to speak to your demographic. That that riled up 
NFL athletes had riled up, just athletes in general. There were basketball players on Twitter dragging Trump that day. Um, NFL owners got involved. But before we even get into the quote-unquote protest that happened on NFL Sunday because of these remarks, tell me what you guys think about these remarks in the first place. The fact that, you know, America is embroiled on some serious stuff right now. I swear two days ago, you know, when I was down in, in, in Georgia, I read a report that they're telling residents in Hawaii to prepare for a nuclear attack. And meanwhile, you, you know, your president is talking about getting these sons of bitches off the field that takes a knee during the anthem. So what do you guys think of his remarks in the first place before we even get into what happened on um, Sunday? I believe that the foundation of the United States of America, and, and, and you can get the bell ready. Um, the foundation. Dude, don't, don't speak on the bell, man. Just go. Yo, the foundation <laughs> of this great quote unquote nation uh, and its and its underlying culture is white supremacy. And so with that being the case, I think through a lot of years coming out of I go I'd say nineteen sixty eight through maybe uh Barack Obama's presidency, the the seasoning, do you, you, you brothers can relate to this. You know how the seasoning in a good pot of gumbo when it's not stirred or a good pot of stew, it sinks to the bottom. And and it still tastes you still but taste still. the elements, you still but still right. But when you stir it up, you get to really you that spice gets get it bites. You, you that seasoning is now put into that gumbo or that stew or that soup. And that's really all Donald Trump is doing. He's stirring that pot. Uh, the elements of that soup, that stew, that, that gumbo um, are, have always been there. They always will be there. And Donald Trump has taken the steps to speak to a segment of the American population that really represents a large part of what America is. Um, and I got a lot of bars on this topic, as I know you, esteemed brothers, do as well. But I'm gonna leave it it's, there in terms of my thoughts on this speech. He's just it's speaking just crazy on what to me how they can continue. So it's like no one at this point should be able to even be riled up by those particular words. They, but they, they, it's they always haven't been happen spoken to. They, can, they continue they to they ignore. They haven't been spoken to for years. They continue to ignore what the, you know, Colin Kaepernick protest was about in the first place. Like, mm-hmm. all we are focusing on is people kneeling. Like, mm-hmm. when did kneeling become a negative thing? Like, people kneel to pray. Shout out, Ray. Um, you know, people kneel to be submissive. Now, all of a sudden, kneeling is the worst crime that you could possibly do. Because like, I've seen a lot of memes on this in the past two weeks. Like, uh, <laughs> You, you're not upset, you know, when there's a knee in the back of a black man by a, by a police officer, but you're upset when somebody's knee hits the grass during that, you know, that wretched song. Be, be, that because, and, and those memes continue to have relevance, even though, you know, they're probably overdoing it a little bit, because as is astutely pointed by our media colleague, pointed to by our media colleague, Mr., and I, I address him as such, Mr. Shannon Sharp. Salute to you. Salute National to treasure, y'all. National protect treasure. <laughs> hero. Hashtag hero. we got to protect the hero uh, of, of, of media and NFL fame. Everyone from, from white people who are, a, who are exercising their privilege uh, and, and, and control in this by intentionally ignoring the narrative and creating their own by saying we refuse to discuss the, the, the reasons behind Colin Kaepernick's actions. We refuse to give light to the fact that he is, he is doing this protest to bring light on shine light on the mistreatment and the abuse of black and minority people by law enforcement, by the judicial system, and by the legislative branch. That is the purpose, and that is the, the, the entire stand of his protest 
and why he's doing it. And we just continue to refuse to address that and continue to point to the flag, to point to uh, the, the armed services. We, we continue to ignore that. And that is the most evident, like that's the most irritating Listen, and asshole-ish the Yemeni. form of racism. Yo, stop. <laughs> Listen real quick. Hey, let, me, let me say something real quick, man. Um, first thing I want to say is I'm at the point now where I'm not even trying to, to explain to uh, my white brothers and sisters um, how I feel or why I feel what I feel. Because if you don't get it at this point, then you're just not trying to get it. You want to yeah, make excuse after it. You don't want to get it. You want to make excuse after excuse after excuse why this. And all you people that support Trump at this point and say, show me something he did racist. FOH. Like this FOH. I don't care, but I don't care to get into the the, uh, the back and forth because what's the point? Because you're not trying to listen anyway. You're not listening. So like the hell with you too. Like go kill yourself. So um, I'm at that Jimmy, point Jimmy, with Jimmy, that. Jimmy, hold on, hold on. What about black on black crime? <laughs> 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 what a joke! What about Chicago? Yo, shout out to Chicago. But um, yeah, I mean, people tell me, what about Chicago? I say Garrett's popcorn is lit. But anyway, um, <laughs> that, that, that's literally my that's Chicago. literally my response now. I'm mean, like, the food is fire in Chicago. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? That's um, my dude. But but all my my point with this whole thing is they didn't basically change the entire narrative, which is disgusting to me. To assassinate um, the messenger. Absolutely. So I just want to say that the Shady McCoy is a coward and a punk. Everyone, Mike Tomlin is a coward and a punk. Um, the, uh, every entire player why, locking arms, every player locking arms are a bunch of cowards and punks. And yeah. I, mean, I just don't care. Fact of the matter is I, they, they made my decision to stop watching this whole thing. Um, they're justifying it, Yo, and which, is, which is crazy. They straight, right? up vindi- they straight up vindicated you because – as your brother, I'll tell our audience on air, I have bars for Jimmy Williams, the blueprint, walking away from football, and then this happens, which completely substantiates. <laughs> Listen, they, they made my decision easy. Like, I don't even like my own team anymore. I grew up as a fan of this team, but I realized, like, yo, I'm a grown man. Like, I, my fandom is dead. Like, this guys on my team with the All Lives Matter nonsense and what about our military, which this has nothing to do with military because if you remember, taking a knee was what he was told to do from someone who served and shed blood for the military as a way to honor the soldiers and still have your protest when he was originally just sitting down. That funny was part, Jim, is, funny part is each branch of the military has their own flag and their own songs. Like, yeah, like, like come so, on, kill all of that. Let me, but no, let me, let me let's, let's let me dig bring, deeper let me bring into my what mom. Jimmy's talking about. Let me bring well, my mom into this real quick. Oh, go, go ahead, man. Go ahead, because I'm about to change the whole... I was going to say, I'm going to bring my mom into this, because my mom, rest in peace, used to say, when people are dishonest and disingenuous, the things that they do are actually like sitting in your face. That's the level of disrespect. The, the right. level of disrespect, when you point to everything but the issue at hand that Colin Kaepernick is kneeling for, you're spitting in my face. You're spitting in his face. You're spitting in black people's face, and some of these black people enjoy it. They don't mind the spit as long as it's coming from white people. Well, that that, that that's a good segue into what Jimmy was saying anyway. Let's dig deeper into what he meant by people changing the narr- narrative and why you know, he was calling out people, black and white, players and owners and whatever, for being a part of changing that narrative. We all know on Sunday, prior to all of the games, you know, we had the the kneeling with the interlocking arms from people during the anthem. We had the um, certain teams not even coming out for the national anthem. We just had this show that everyone in the media was calling a show of unity and, um, you know, using all kinds of positive words in that in that vein. However, the reason that we believe, and I'm sure a lot of people out there agree with us, that the narrative was being changed was because, first of all, none of these people were taking up the fight and the plight started by Colin Kaepernick in the first place. But they're all using his means of protest. So now, you know, for the people who didn't want to listen and didn't want to acknowledge what he was protesting for in the first place, like we've just co-opted the whole movement and 
you know, now it's about something else. He can go out there and, and, and kneel and give a voice to people and protect people that look like 70% of the NFL and not many people did anything, you know, in unity with him. Now I give props to the, to those that did. But then on a Sunday like this, everybody in the league wants to do something because the president calls an NFL player, calls players sons of bitches. You know what I'm saying? So now are we out here taking up the calls of Colin Kaepernick? Or are we out here mad and pouting because someone called us a name? So this Yo, whole of all the show things Trump said. with owners being involved in it as well with the whole kneeling and the you know stuff like that. Yo, man. Yeah. It was. It was. It, it, it was the terrible, whole movement man. has been co-opted. It it's a joke. He, they, he disrespected their daddy, so now they want to take a knee. Like my whole thing is, before he said the things he said, <coughs> did you think that he felt otherwise? That, that's right. my question. Did you think? Like I don't even get into the whole debate about Trump anymore. Like I, I just like it's like yo. First of all, I like to deal with people who are solutions based. So like, how are we going to help our own community? That, that's kind of like where my focus is. So I don't even like to get into the whole thing. Our president's a troll. And he's been a troll. He right. is who he and, is. You, and, you, and you're not gonna make him. You're not gonna make him concede because after the 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 showing and the mockery, uh, what I'm gonna call it, that went down on on Sunday afternoon, some on Sunday morning because of the early morning lending game, all he did was double down. And these are some quotes from him after that. He said, "They say we're in a situation where we have to do something." I think they're afraid of their players. <laughs> you want to know the truth. So all he did was double down and say, you know, these guys came out here and put on this little show. They're afraid of their players because what he's basically trying to say is they don't really believe in anything that they were acting like they believed in on Sunday. Um, and and, we'll, and it's going to be proven because how many times do you guys think team owners are going to be out here doing this? They're going to give their little show. They got their little uh, photo op. Shout out to Jerry Jones who couldn't even take his eyes off of the camera to make sure the camera was <laughs> on him. <Yo. laughs> like, he couldn't look is, away for one yo, minute just to make sure yo. it looked and, and genuine. Not, and I want people to understand, <laughs> it's not that I'm justifying um, the behavior or the thoughts um, of people, but yo, he's a 70-year-old white guy who, you know, was, way, who was raised a, a certain way with a certain level. Of, how do you think he feels? Like That's my whole thing. So why are you upset at something that you know anyway because he voiced it? Because he went after your dad, he's not like once he go after your master. Now you got to fight back because we sick folks. Yeah. Like, but in the meantime, when it was really a chance to do something, you had nothing. To do. I don't even like. To me, they're a bunch of cowards. Like they're they're the all intellectual, a bunch of cowards. The intellectual and spiritual sickness that's evidenced in this false, this idolatrous protest is is horrible because it's almost like. We don't even care about ourselves and where we come from. We're only going to stand up when you insult our owners, when you insult the institution of $40 million. <laughs> That's a whole nother, it's a whole nother book, but I, I, I get it. I, I get where you're coming from, Jimmy. And I agree because these guys wouldn't stand up and take a risk of standing up for what Colin Kaepernick was standing up for, but because the messenger, we've all agreed in general public that the messenger is someone that's okay to condemn. Oh, now we'll jump on, we'll kneel, we'll do all of this stuff, but you're still totally ignoring the fact that all of this started with a call to attention and a call to arms in defense of black men and women and brown men and women being murdered at the hands of law enforcement, we just skip over oh, alarming rates. Well, hold we on, it's not over. even that. They, it's not even that they didn't, um, you know, uh, try to fight the same way Cap did. It's not even that. Some of these dudes were disrespecting him for what he did, saying he was right. foolish, and you know what I mean. That's the thing to me. Like some of y'all were disrespecting him, and now, like you know, shady. I'm talking, looking at you. You, you didn't. Yeah. What's the point? And now, like, and now he out here stretching during the. Come on, man. He's stretching during the anthem because Trump clown, said something dude. about Moscow. Yeah, come on, man. You, you, he's a clown. Man. Like, and and we yeah, not and, even and, getting to to rakis. Like, it's not even point. Yeah, like, we, 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 we don't get into rakis, but we're gonna do that in a couple minutes, Jim. 
What I want to talk to you guys about real quick, because, you know, we know we can't really take Shady too seriously about anything. Um, the, the sad part about it, though, there was a lot of black people out there cheering these guys on and defending them and this and, you know, like he didn't say what he said a few weeks ago. So what, he's stretching and being disrespectful during the national anthem. Did you do that when homie was out there trying to take up for people to look like you? All right, I want to talk about Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers. They were one of maybe two teams. I think the Seahawks uh, didn't come out for the national anthem. And I will admit wholeheartedly that I haven't, I still haven't gotten around to actually researching the Seahawks and their reasons for not coming out. So after we talk about the Steelers, if you guys have any information on that, you know, feel free to jump in with why they said, all right, they, that, you know, they did it. But Mike Tomlin, I wanted to talk about the Steelers in general, because I have a lot of friends, whether they be real friends, social media friends, or, or whatever, who are part of Steelers Nation. And, you know, a lot of people get on this kick where their teams, coaches, owners, players can do no wrong. So I saw a lot of people their praising owners. Mike Tomlin, like, you know, for keeping the team inside of the tunnel while the national anthem was going on. And when I first heard, you know, when I first saw what they were doing, I didn't, I didn't think about it that deeply, you know what I'm saying? Because at that point, I wasn't, like, upset, like, oh, man, he, he's this, he's that. And then I actually did some research and read up on why he actually kept the team in there. And this was a compromise that he had his team make because he didn't want them to be divided, and he wanted them to, um, you know, all be in unity and striving for the same goal, which is to win a football team. He wanted them to be about business. Now I'm thinking there's a lot of things going on right now that's bigger than football. Um, Not necessarily the fact that Donald Trump called some players sons of bitches, but the fact that he kept them back there and had them make that kind of compromise shows me that he didn't want his team seen. He didn't want to, you know, the, the camera to see some players kneeling and some players not. So in my opinion, he basically took away the rights of expression to whoever on his team wanted to make a statement, whoever on his team wanted to protest. And he basically took their expression away from them by preaching to us about this unity and all for one goal type of thing. When there could be some things going on that's bigger to some of these players than just the game. And as a, as a black guy who, you know, has definitely played that card from time to time. I was really disappointed in the fact that he did that. I don't know how you guys felt about Mike Tomlin and, and, and doing that. Cause we really haven't talked about it besides a few minutes ago when Jimmy labeled him a coward with the rest of them. So what did you guys think about the fact that the Steelers didn't come out and their reasons for not coming out? Football. He's a coward. Watt is a coward. Ben Roethlisberger is a coward. Cause the next day I, I, he, I think came out, yo, they're all cowards. It's really is nothing else. like you. You basically, truck, yeah. Tow, tow got you. Tow truck. Oh, that's terrible, yo. Because they all they all cowards. How about that? They all cowards. Roethlisberger is a coward. Very clear. Very clear. Um. Okay, I'm clear. Okay, as long yeah, as I'm clear, clear, they're all they're you, all you cowards. Got the, you you got be, them bars you wanna, off. You want to remain <laughs> neutral. You want to be sweet. And you're a coward, yo. Remaining mm-hmm. remaining neutral is actually the absolute most cowardly thing you can do in this situation. And I think that what happens in America is we, we place such a value on wealth, riches, and attention. When star athletes and celebrities make it, and we've talked about this before, when they quote-unquote make it, it separates them so far from the black community that they think of themselves as being beyond the black experience. And they're so sensitive to remaining in that position, in that shining golden light of NASA's good graces, that they're not willing to risk. A lot of them aren't willing to risk anything that will take them away from NASA's shining good graces and the riches they've attained. And so they're going to remain either neutral or in extreme cases, they become the biggest white supremacists out there and defend the institutions that they, that have oppressed them in the past. 
and that's where Mike Tykes, Mike Tomlin, Uncle Rakis, and, and and a lot of others fall. All right, well, we're going to get to um, Uncle Rakis in a minute. We got some calls on the phone line. Uh, we're going to go out to Arizona. The homie Tobias is waiting. I know he got two cents to get off. Tobias, what's going on, good brother? Welcome to the world. What's going on? Roll down time, baby. 59 or nothing. I like the <laughs> number one with a bullet, baby. But anyway, uh, and my Chicago Bulls. Probably going five and seventy-seven this year. We got guys that ain't got a jersey number yet. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, if you they put might the never Bulls get on, one. They this, might make the team and hey, not get a jersey number to buy. If you put this year Bulls on two K, it'd be a bunch of silhouettes, not even pictures. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yo, hey. yo, so what do you think about this uh, this NFL show of quote unquote unity? Um, on on Sunday prior to the game, I'll laugh. I'll laugh at the idea of unity. All right, what y'all see in my Facebook? Well, what I put down. I said first thing I asked them, where the, where the hell were they at when Kaepernick was protesting? They kept saying, "Well, it's a distraction. Oh, uh, you know, we want to answer these questions all day. Oh, uh, we don't want to talk about this." But soon as it, soon as Donald Trump calls Calvin Candy, uh, gets on them. And talk about y'all, now nah, y'all want to fight. But here's the thing. Unity in pretty much means making white people feel comfortable. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a great point. Is like, huh? <laughs> that's a, I said that's a great point because they had to do yeah, something that wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't intimidating in the least bit. Like, all right, let's get our – our, our white team owners and our coaches and stuff, and let's all interlock arms because we're mad at Donald Trump. But you're locking arms with dudes, you know, ran, you know several dudes who paid that millions of dollars to Donald Trump's Gave a campaign. Of dollars. So I was like, hey, he, yeah. are they really mad or are they just trying to show the yeah. players? Like, they just don't want angry players. And Trump might be, you know, spot on when he doubled down and say, oh, these guys are just afraid of their players. He might be spot you know, on about here's that. the thing. Here's the thing. The reason I never like saying black and brown, people of color, minorities, the Jacksonville Jaguars owner is brown, technically a minority, technically a man of color, and he gave a million dollars to Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, but, yet, but yet, these players are locking arm and arm with him. Good point. No, one ha- no one has the courage to say, Do you want, why do you want me to unify if he gave a man this million dollars? See, what black folks got to understand is you put your money by, behind what you believe in. Your words say one thing, that pocket says another. And all these people knew what Trump was about. But yet, there's the other problem with black folks. We want to be apolitical. We don't want to be political at all until blankety blank hits the fan that now everybody wants to be a political analyst. It's too late then. And, uh, and I'll say this real quick. For white people out there, I'm talking to y'all and the black folks who like, uh, you know, who looking for their butter biscuit, like Whitlock and company. See, like Colin Kaepernick, for example. Or like, not to use him, but I just say like an Eric Reed, who who was with him with the 49ers. Malcolm who Jenkins. took that knee right next to him. Yeah. Uh, and they may be rich, but we know the reality of black America. Our family members aren't. We have family members who probably who live in these neighborhoods who have re- or maybe regular people get pulled over and stopped all the time, may get beaten up, may just get frisked, may just get, you know, anything, who may not have these same privileges, you know, with business loans, stuff like that. But, yeah, they, it ain't an individual thing because white folks love trying to split black people up. I'm talking about the racists. But, yet when it comes to be racist, they're unifying front. they like vote trust. No doubt. All right, man. Our phone lines are blowing up, so <laughs> we definitely gotta let you go. Hey, but you know, hey, we appreciate I, 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 I said, it, it, hey, hey, I said it's one last thing. Rick Pitino, mm-hmm. I heard he's having a, a nice going away party. You know, a nice harem <laughs> party. You know, Warren Sapp uh-huh. invited too. Well, no, uh, in <laughs> honor of Hugh Hefner. Hey, mm-hmm. Eugene Robinson's gonna read Eugene Robinson and Warren Sapp bringing the women. But hey, y'all take it yeah. easy, man. <laughs> All right, man. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for your call. All right, let's go out to – and everybody on the line, just know we got to keep these short because we got a lot of calls. Um, let's go – well, I thought we had 
Oh, there he is. We got Rob out in Cali. Rob, what's going on? Welcome to the War Room. Yo, what's good, man? Yo, what's good? How y'all doing, man? Yo, y'all stop doing it? crazy challenges out there. Do it for the eggplant or do it for the pizza, man. Do it for your people, man. Do it for your respect yourself. That's all I got to say. But anyways, man, yo, how y'all doing, man? Yo, the ladies do it for the Pretty eggplant. Good. Are you? <laughs> no, I, <I'm>, yo. <laughs> I feel you. I'm, I'm kind of yeah. shocked at some of the women that I see doing that challenge, man. Yo, man. All I'm going to say about that is, all I'm going to say about that is, yeah, I ain't going to say nothing I about need it, to do it for mine, not just for any. Huh? <laughs> Yo, all I'm, I'm going to say is, I ain't going to say nothing about that. But Rob, though, man, I just want to tell you, man, like, you know, um, you know, we joke with you or whatever, but you made one of the most poignant posts about the whole thing going on with the NFL, which I did share. So salute to you for putting that together. Um, so I know you have some thoughts about what's going on in uh, sports because it's funny because people that just love sports, a lot of people that continue to watch and love sports, they feel like their sports are being hijacked, and so what? <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, in sports, if there was no hijacked. political, if there was no politics in sports, there would have been no desegregation, and they would have never enjoy the black athletes they have now. You know, it's, mm. it's a hypocrisy. It's a hypocrisy. Yeah, and Rob, you know, you know it, it wasn't the athletes who who put the, the national anthem and the flag and all of these displays of quote unquote patriotism before sporting events anyway. So everybody who's out there, how can you complain that you don't want all of this stuff? You don't want the politics to mix with sports, yet you're upset because a man is not saluting your flag prior to the game. You can't have it both ways. It's, it's, you just said you it didn't goes, want that. So he should if goes, he don't want goes, that, he you know. <laughs> it it pissed me off because it goes back to this whole thing. They're arriving the the trend is and first of all, thank you for y'all. Yeah, as much as I argue with y'all, I listen to y'all and I comprehend and I learn from it. So thank y'all, I learn from y'all. But uh, y'all challenge me to grow actually. Yeah, yeah. But as much as much as I people want to salute this whole protest it doesn't make any sense to me because they're cowards. It's like, why weren't y'all doing it to Kaepernick? I know guys like Malcolm Jenkins, Anquan Bolden, other guys um, protested before last year. I salute them, right? But Rob, these guys Rob, are just protesting Rob, Trump. Rob. It, they're pro- very, very, very few of us appreciate and adore our blackness. In fact, we apologize for it. We think it's in the way. We think it makes people uncomfortable. So we don't even think we have a right to fight for our humanity if it's coupled with our blackness. So these athletes are are scared to death, and maybe they don't don't value themselves in the context of being black men. They value themselves in the context of being great athletes, and that's what they've been saluted for. It's true. It's it's like – it's true. It's like when they're young. It's like a the process. Like when I think of infant, we have to think of when we think of like infant because I, I because I want to go how the athletes is conditioned to be this uh, middle class, this mascot, this middle class mascot. But 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 even then, it also transformed them. It also transformed them into this infeminate athlete, which they are scared of white supremacy. So therefore. They're going to, like you said, hate their own blackness and act like nothing's going on. Looks like Cam Newton saying, you know, oh, you know, um, oh, you know, I'm a black quarterback. Some people are scared of that. The next thing he says, oh, what, what is color? You know, what is that? You right. know, or like Lil Wayne saying, Black Lives Matter at his concert. And then the next man saying, oh, I don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about. What is black? What is this? What is that? What is Black Lives Matter? I'm rich. I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know what that is. You know, it's it's wow. it, it's hypocrisy. I don't. I don't. I don't. Even, I don't even know if I want to really watch the NFL because of that. Because the media is going to start this a different way. But, you, you know. And hello. Yeah, we're here. Go ahead. Hurry. Oh, 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 all I gotta say is we're talking about football. Because I know y'all got calls. I want to make a point about the Eagles before I go and basketball real quick. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins did. A beautiful thing. I don't know about know about what what he's doing and what he does. He brought the police department together, community groups together. Roger Goodell for in at the meeting, and it was Jeffrey Lurie, 
it was it was athletes who 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 talked about the injustices and they talked sat down and talked about white supremacy. I don't know if I saw that video. It, it was beautiful to see, and we need to see more of that. Now, I didn't it, see it. Now, I'm gonna, now, I'm gonna now, check it out. Is it, is, your... is, is, is it? Yeah, yeah. Is it bad? Is is, is it a um? Is it like, like I will say this that it's a step, but it's small steps that they need to make, and I appreciate. It. And that's what more athletes need to do. And that's what more athletes need to do. Need to do as a community. Now that's what I'm saying. Like. It's all What's about your, being um, solutions, solutions based, man. What That's points it. you want to make Come about basketball, solutions. real quick? Because we got to move to the next call. Uh, I knew Wade was going to go to. I knew Wade oh, yeah. was going to go to Cleveland. You know, Cleveland's going to take on the East. There's no, there's no, but Melo, too. I, I think Melo, I think it's great that Melo went to the Thunder because he would not play well with the Rockets because people forget Mike, people forget Mike D'Antoni, who I hate. I just hate that coach. Um, that he didn't work well with his system. That focuses on on scoring a lot of points and playing lack defense, and basically focuses on the guards. You know, and Melo right. is a post player. He he he, okay. he does a pull up. You know, he, he does a pull. He he, he 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 can do basically anything you ask him to. You know, so so yeah. so hopefully if Russell Westbrook tries to play <clears throat> like a like a Traditional point guard like a Chris Paul, I think it. I think I think. Well, he's better than Chris Paul. I I, I think they have a shot being the Warriors now. Now, hello. Right, well, you you make an interesting point, now, and I, I have a similar point. We're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. But Rob, we gotta go, man. We will holler at oh, you next all right. week. All right. Yo, yo, Doug. Oh, okay, okay. Thank y'all. Keep y'all doing what you're doing. And Doug Pearson, stop playing Madden, man. Stop going on fourth and eight, man. This is not Madden, okay? <laughs> all all right. Say. Peace. <laughs> All right, man, let's go. We got Tom calling in from LA. Tom, what's going on? Welcome to the war room. How you guys doing? Absolutely <laughs> fantastic, Tom. Nice guys. Yeah, no, nah, I guess I just weigh in on what you've been been talking about a bit here. I think uh I think to me just the the whole situation is just so ridiculous, right? You got a you got a guy who was elected supposedly because he's not politically correct, and he goes against everything that is politically correct, and yet here he is, just trying to chime in on people supposedly needing to be the most politically correct that they possibly can be by standing for the national anthem. I think the crazy thing about this whole situation is that he has us talking about things purely to distract us from what he's actually doing on a day-to-day basis. I won't go too yeah. far into that, but like this, uh, this but that's a great, that's a great point. Thing. though. That's a great, I mean, that, that's, that's, like that's a fact, great point. I mentioned that earlier. They're actually warning our citizens in Hawaii to prepare for a nuclear attack. Like how serious right. is that? And I know right. a lot of people who hadn't even heard of that report. Like that's well, I mean, so we're, serious. We're, guys, like we're, we're talking that we're talking layers of him covering stuff up because you think him picking a nuclear fight with North Korea is actually relevant as well. Like that is even part of another thing where he's trying to distract us from the fact that he's appointing federal judges that are unbelievably conservative. Keeps yeah. trying to sneak health care bills by like there's a bunch of stuff that's actually happening right now. And we're talking about stuff that is. The only important part about the, this entire thing, right, is that I think that while Obama was president, there was a certain um, assumption and feeling in America that racism was gone. We were in a post-racial America. We had an African-American president. Everyone's oh, moved on, oh. blah, blah, blah. Yes, sir. Right? And I think it was, it was always so far from the truth and such an absurd notion um, that, you know, the only positive thing that you can say about this presidency is that no one can ever deny that again. Now, dumb people will deny Amen. it because dumb people are dumb. But, um, you know, I think that it's, it's like what's happening, right, it's so many hypocritical forces smashing together at once, right? You have the NFL, which – is probably so happy secretly that this Trump thing happened because guess what they don't have to talk about? That Aaron Hernandez, who was supposedly some crazy athlete, <laughs> oh, yeah. CTE, and that half of the athletes that get tested for this stuff 
have or like he had the worst case of it that anyone's seen since I mean, at this age of anyone ever, according to this whole suit. Which yeah, I they said his brain was the equivalent true. of a sixty-eight-year-old. Right, and so like no one's talking about that, right? They're all talking. Damn, about that's the another great the national point. Anthem. But I think that you know the big thing I take away from this because I think when you see stuff like this where the topic of conversation is so irrelevant and matters so little, you have to take away the pieces that I think actually do matter. And so the, the part I've taken away from this, right, is I find it so fascinating how you never hear uh, Fox News or any television station say the phrase about a banker or someone in finance or a lawyer or a doctor that they're lucky to have the position that they have, and they should just thank this country for letting them have the position that they have, right? Yeah. But when you talk about an athlete, all of a sudden athletes are supposed to be thankful for the position they have, as if they weren't just like a talented, you know, doctor or something like that. No, you are absolutely right. Yeah. In fact, in fact, right? So you talk about someone who's a surgeon or a doctor. There's probably more people in the world that can do what you do as opposed to um, who can run like a four, a four, uh, a four one forty? Like some of these guys do right. at three hundred pounds. Like it, it's a talent. We kind of we fed the shit to the whole dumb job thing. And you're making a lot of right. amazing points in terms of the distractions because there's so much going on in our world that we're not paying attention to. And you're absolutely correct because even myself, a lot of the things you brought up I knew, but it's like because of everything else, it's like even my energy is not focused, and I know this is going on. Um, so those are amazing points that you're bringing up. Uh, so it's just, it's just a sad thing where, where we are right now. Um, because like I said, some people who love sports that I know who are still watching are like, yo, I, I, I can't even enjoy it. You know what I mean? And these are good people. Cause the thing is, so, at the end of the day, man, it's all about right is right and wrong is wrong. And I don't think that some people right. see that it's like people are taking sides and they're going to fight on that side regardless of what's right and regardless of what's wrong. And I think that's the, the saddest thing about what's happening um, with this country. Because even with your news, you tend to watch whatever news slants to what side you, at, you know, you, you you're on. You yeah. reinforce it. Right. Tom, Tom and, 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 and I'd ask you this, Tom, as well as, as uh, you, Jimmy, and, and you, Devin, with what Trump is doing, with some of these moves, um, and Tom, you brought up an amazing one with the appointment of ultra, super conservative judges. And I don't even like using that label because I don't like the connotation that conservative equals uh, racist or negative. But, you know, it's come, to, it's come to that. But with the appointment of these judges who may have racist slants or biased slants, How does America come back from that? Because they're going to be here long after Trump is gone and their impact on the interpretation of legislation as it, as it rolls down to people is going to be seen for at least a generation. How do you come back from that? I mean, what my hope is, right. And I think it goes back to my initial point, right. I think a lot of us that are, that actually think beyond our fingertips, Right. Like, you know, the country was, once again, lulled to sleep, I think, a little bit by Obama presidency because it was so comfortable. It was so easy. It was such a comeback time in America. Right. Like from, I mean, oh, nine, we hit basically financially rock bottom and then we slowly started climbing ourselves up. It was a time where we were like regaining kind of cultural respect around the world after like years of Bush. Um, And, you know, I thought that we were heading very much towards exactly what you're talking about, right? Where the time where someone was conservative was not a time where you're saying, all right, like they, that person believes that there shouldn't be abortions or like that police brutality is fine and stuff like that, that it was literally going to slowly become a conversation of, okay, like I don't like being taxed. I don't know if you guys like being taxed, but if it was just a conversation about that, then the Republicans might get a decent amount of people's votes because most of us don't like being taxed that much. So maybe if that became the real thing, then we would have a different thing. But it, it's, it's become about so much more. So how do we make a comeback? I mean, the good thing about what you're seeing in this country right now is that it hasn't happened yet, but you know, you've seen the return of true journalism, right? Like, these institutions that we thought were dying out, the New York Times, the Washington Post, I mean, they are, talk about a, like, it's an all-time comeback year 
for institutions like that, right? I think that Trump is still has still not successfully passed one thing that he's been able to. He is he is taking the power of the presidency to the absolute extreme, but it's nothing that can't be undone. And I think that what you're seeing in impact, you're, he's, he's impassioning a base that if that base decides to go out and vote, will crush his party, right? So how do we come back from it? People are going to need to actually get off their ass and go vote for representatives. Now, we're going to have to fight back against gerrymandering and stuff like that that'll make it almost impossible to win certain seats. But the fact of the matter remains is that if enough people go out to vote in the United States, and it sucks because you can't do it on the Internet, and it's not that easy, and you won't be able to because the Republicans will fight it tooth and nail. But if enough people, one, recognize to stop associating this with Trump and start associating this with the Republican Party, because never forget, Trump is a person. The Republican Party could end this at any point in time. Any point in time, they could end this entire thing. They're letting this happen because they want a lot of their own policies pushed through. And I don't mean to make this so political, but this is what's really happening. So people need to get out and actually vote. And I I do have faith in this country, right? I think that the backlash to what Trump is doing, whether it be the NFL, which I think is very fake, but at the very least, it's one of the most conservative organizations in the world, actually fighting back in some liberal fashion, no matter how you want to interpret it. Like, he is mobilizing a large group of people. There are people that never speak out politically that are doing it currently. It's a dark time for this country, but I think we could come out the other side. I don't want to say better because <laughs> Jesus is pretty bad right now. No, we that's, could come out that's, that's tough, man. Tom, and we appreciate you. Guys a you. Question. I yeah. think that, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, Austin, I didn't mean to cut you off. And uh, just, just a yes or no question. Do you think that long term? his presidency and everything that he's brought is actually a good thing for this country long-term because of the things you just said. Uh, I mean, if, I think that's for the generation after us for today. Right now, I, it'd be pretty difficult to say that. I've never seen anything as bad as this, but maybe I think that's how we have to think. But at the same time, Right now, it's important that we not think that because this guy has to be stopped by everyone. So, Tom, we appreciate you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for all the amazing points, Tom. We do. That's amazing, man. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. (laughs) All right. We got uh, the great great poet Nasir Jones said that you have to destroy before you rebuild. Um, He did. He He also said you owe me. (laughs) <laughs> he also said, "Owe me back like you owe your tax." Tax. <laughs> <laughs> and his alias is Doctor Knockboot. Let's go to KC Mac <laughs> down in Dallas. KC Mac, what's going on, good brother? You in the war room? How in the war am I supposed to follow that call? <laughs> that was a good call. Tom was bringing the fire. Oh, golly, I feel like yeah. I got too so many. My head swarming. Man, Tom gave it a nice thirty-two bars, man. Go ahead, Casey. Yeah. I feel like yeah, he was he Professor is. Tom. I was, I was a he's student. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you hey, failed you know when what? you supported LeVar Ball, but we ain't going to talk about that, man. Well, <laughs> you know what? Y'all still talking about him, though. That's, that's another Uncle conversation, Ball, but y'all, y'all supporting him more than I am. Yeah. Hey, you right. Only person, only person that had nuts this past weekend was um, – <laughs> Office alignment named Alejandro Villanueva for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. He had the nerve to go out there and salute the flag. Mm-hmm. He's the only one that had a mind of his own. He and stood he, on he yeah. stood on his side of the fence, the fence and planted I mean, he his used flag. A, he used a, a bunch of crazy excuses of why he did it, but we, well, we I know. I mean, you know, all he, he had to do is say he's he military. To do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, I mean, did, he did it because he, he did it. To it. You know, you're right? He's like the only person right. who actually thought for himself in the whole process. Uh, I will mm-hmm. give him that. Um, you know, hey, but he, the rest he, of that, he, all the GI Joe, screen text, all Jim Duggan, all that. Yeah, I can't get with that. Look, it, it is a sad state to see at least thirty plantation owners. <laughs> the one down here in Dallas. Damn. Who told any of his players, if I see y'all ass on the sideline kneeling, y'all gone. And what did he do? He gave 53-man roster permission to kneel Sunday night. 
or was it Monday night? He gave his Sunday slaves night. permission. At the, it, as long as you have your master's permission. Yeah, the, yeah, you can leave the plantation when you got your papers. You got to be back you at a certain time. Me. But listen, no, being serious though, even that though, like you know, they they made sure there were stipulations to them kneeling though. There were conditions to them kneeling. They kneeled prior to the national anthem, and as the national anthem was about to be sung, they all got up and they, you know, okay. showed their respect for the flag, they whether that's what they wanted to do or not. So, but you know, know what they did? There was exactly what to their protest. Martha told them to do. Yeah, they did I mean, exactly he, what Jones told them to do. Uh, Dot man, like this. What's this celebration and locking arms? Yeah, I, 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 Are they going to do it this coming Sunday? I never got that. Because when you do you that, to tell me? it's like it's like you're just trying to show the other people up. Like Because remember, after Kaepernick started, when he started, there were a few teams and players who would go out there and lock arms. I think that's just trying to show him up. Like how I looked at it originally, when Colin Kaepernick kneeled, sat down, And then the the next week you saw some players locking arms. I think that's one of those things where he shouted Black Lives Matter and then they locked arms and shouted All Lives Matter. (laughs) That's how I see that, you know? And and now, you know, everybody's taking not his movement because none of these people are actually for his movement, but they're taking his form of protest and they're just totally making people forget about what he was doing it for. There was already people and, and you who know didn't what? want to acknowledge. Now, they just you can thank, forget about it altogether. You can thank Donald Trump or Trump, whatever you want to call him for that. The simple fact that he did what he did. He stirred the pot. You got to realize that, remember, Donald Trump does not like the National Football League because they would not allow him to get in the league. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> it was all about People him. forget that. Yeah. People forget yeah, that. Yeah, like USFL days. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So, I mean, you know what? He, he stirred that pot. And, you know, DNA. Hey, hey. <laughs> Listen, man. Hey. I'm, I'm going to get off because I know it's, I got short time, but, you know, I'm going to throw in my, uh, my two wins this, this weekend. Uh, you know, <laughs> Monday night. <laughs> you know them red skins. We're going to skin them skins. We're going to show them who the skins are. Of them skins. I forgot. It's Monday night. Every, all right. Yeah. I forgot every week you're in line for either two wins, two losses, one win, one loss. Hey, it, it is so damn nice stressful. There. It, must be a nice it is yo, so stressful. But hey, listen, man. It is you know, it's stressful, though, but you have to do that twice per weekend. I can hey, see. Hey, no you, KC Mack, it's, it's you happening yeah. today, so salute to you for having a menage a trois with your fandom, brother. I, I understand. Hey, man. <laughs> so, okay, so, hey, don't hate. Don't I'm not hating. I'm hating on a menage. All right, KZ Mac, yeah. man. We'll holler at you later, man. Thanks for your call. Y'all be good. All right, you too. Always. <laughs> All right. Let's let's just keep the, the lines are going. So uh who we got next? We got the homie Corey Bennett calling in. Oh, this is Court. This is the homie Court. What's going on, Court? Yeah. Court. What's up, man? I rock with y'all, man. First time caller, seven year listener. Oh, wow. Man. What's going on, man? To you, bro. Appreciate it. Salute. Salute. Yeah, man, I, 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 I've been rocking with you. About this. Yeah, man. I'm going to keep it short. I ain't got too many bars because I'm kind of nervous my first time getting through to y'all, but I salute everything y'all do. Y'all got great chemistry. I mean, I feel like y'all some of my cousins, man. Y'all had me rolling with that Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> And and that's exactly that's call. exactly what we set out to be, man. We just we, we always wanted people to just think of us as just some dudes having a conversation, and everybody just get to listen. Like nothing super structured. We just want you to feel like you're a part of the group, and you know, cousins even, Yo, like we, you said. And we just we having appreciate a conversation. the support, though. I just want to say we're in thank the barber you, man. Shop right now. <laughs> we're in the barber. Shop. Uh, uh, it, it's heartfelt, guys. Like I said, I don't got too many bars. I just touch on a couple of things. But I'm gonna start calling because I know I can get through now. Why I have some more bars for y'all? But far as with this, um, with this NFL stuff that's going on, I mean, just like what y'all said, it's really cowardly, man. Because Cap took the stand for us, and, he, right. and what he was, what he was, what he was trying to say was he wasn't necessarily going through police police brutality himself. 
He was just saying he's speaking for the injustices that the voices uh, can't speak on. He got the platform right. to do it, but he want to bring it to the forefront. Mm-hmm. And these people, the first thing that they say is, oh, he's so rich. He's so oppressed. He has, he's not talking about himself. He's never said it was about himself. And they keep going over that point. Right. And then I was America, America is so powerful that it can slowly change the narrative and, and ignore right in front of you what the true topic is and change it to be what they want, which is a slandering of the messenger because they're not comfortable with the message. Right. Exactly. But since you brought up Donald Sterling... Oh, but what does he do for the black people? <laughs> doesn't do anything. You call up and think... Well, you he's know, he's, the opened, Jewish business, people he's, he's a, opened a lot of businesses the in, in inner-city neighborhoods. The Jewish people have a company, and it's for people who want to borrow money and no interest. <laughs> they want to give them a fish pole, fishing pole. We <laughs> want to no help people. If they don't have the money, we'll loan it to you. You don't have interest, one day you'll pay us back. Sir, I, I'm just telling you, he does nothing. It's sir, all talk. And yo, Jimmy, I love Donald Trump. Jimmy, let me get your yell. <laughs> <laughs> <I even know. laughs> Go ahead, Jimmy. Let me get your yell. Come on, I'm sorry. Come on, man. I'm I gotta sorry. that'll come natural before the show is out because one of these brothers okay. gonna say something to make me say it, good brother. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Yeah, hey, I'll, I'll be talking to you in the show, man. I love y'all, man. Keep doing what y'all doing, man. I love y'all, man. No doubt, man. All right, peace, King P. Love you, too, man. We're going to throw some JoJo Awards in there for you, too, by the end of the night. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All, All right. right. NFL <laughs> JoJo Awards. All right. Thank you, man. Peace. <laughs> What's up? All right, we got uh, we're going to take one last call for a little while. We got to get the homie Naj down in the ATL. What's going on, Naj? Welcome to the War Room. <laughs> what up, y'all? Hey, that was a really, really uncomfortable last 30 seconds because my man had too much dignity to perform on command. And even though it was all in love because the caller was good, he seemed like good people. But my man had too much in him to do it. Like, I said, respect like, nah, it. Like, I got you. Respect it. Dignity. <laughs> Plus, like he said, but, uh, he yo, nah, yo, nah, don't do that, man. Don't, don't do that. No, 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 shot, no shot. It's, 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 yo, it's all hear, love. Like, I, it's just hard. It's right. just hard, Paul. It's cool. These dudes make me say that to every show because they always say something that's like, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Hey, already, but... hey, man, whenever I call this show, I know I ain't got to do no, you know, uh, cleaning up or nothing. I know y'all can nah. lay out everything, and I'm going to try to add to it because that's what y'all do. Y'all thorough. So y'all hitting mm-hmm. the points correctly, man. You're looking at this is how you co-opt the movement. Uh, not only right. do you water it down, but you make the narrative about something completely else because you don't want to oh, deal with the, the Naj, topic that Naj we brought Naj has on studied. Hand. Naj has seen in history where they've done this many, many, many times before. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, 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 and for all you out there who don't get what we're saying, pull up Message to the Grassroots from Malcolm X where he talked about the March on Washington led by revolutionaries and freedom fighters who were going to shut down the government. All of a sudden, the government started working with organizations. It got a little watered down. Before you know it, as Malcolm said, they told him what to say, when to, uh, what sign to hold up, and when to leave. Totally different mm-hmm. message than what was uh, initially started with. So, you know, co-opting movements is nothing new, and it's sad to see this one go down that route and to see so many brothers complicit in it and not <coughs> understand what's being done. So, you know, right. the idea of unity without any justice is ridiculous. Listen, so, okay, let's, let's nice. unify. Let's hold hands. Wait nah, a minute, the matrix. The, topic we brought the matrix. Up. The matrix wasn't fictional. The matrix movie <laughs> wasn't a fictional movie. It was uh, the great Rock <laughs> Wiley. Uh, rest in peace to that brother. He used to call them the lenses of media. Uh, with mm. the lenses of media, you can refract and change mm. the whole dynamic. So before you know it, you're talking about whether wow. somebody uh, doing something in front of a flag is distasteful rather than people being killed. And then people will actually ask you a question of, well, do you think they should respect the flag? Not realizing that you're asking me, uh, should my life be more important than whether you get uncomfortable? Like, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's the question on the table. And I love our audience. So, <laughs> yo, and rest, <laughs> in, rest, yo, rest in peace to yo, the legend Ralph Nas, we need, Ralph that as a sound, like, we need that as a sound bite, yo. Could you, could you, that, could you give that to the listeners again? <laughs> you repeat that, <laughs> oh. Nod came in here on his successor John too though. Like not not just kicking the ballistics, but that that's a great point because Ralph Wiley was like a, a genius man ahead of his time, and that's a that's an uh, listen man. You didn't came in here and um 
You co opted our sauce, man, with this, them amazing bars. <laughs> I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think that, about that's the, that's the only thing of black journalism uh, of the past era that we way too much forget about. And his books are available for real cheap on Amazon for all y'all young sports fans. Who yeah, want to definitely. Get to that business. No I, I no read his book. He, he's amazing. He's amazing. In, but the point you made about Malcolm X, that's another amazing point. I didn't even like. I, I knew. I knew about. I knew about that in his speech, and I knew that, but I didn't draw the parallel with the NFL until you just. did. So that kind of like blew my mind. Like you're right. Um. So yeah, just Didn't amazing you points, blow man. My mind. But Naj, nah, we got <laughs> yeah, a great that, point. Yeah, that, that one, that one oh, is like what is he done? Can you tell me? Obvious. Big Magic Johnson. What is he done? <laughs> well, he has, he's a business person. He, oh, he's man. got AIDS. Yeah. Did he do any? <laughs> my bad. Yeah. Yeah. How, 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 how about the fact that like Donald Sterling and that whole thing, like the NBA got rid of him real quick. They don't even, they don't even want to deal with these issues. They got him up out of there. I mean, they he gave him a couple segue. billion. They gave him a couple segue. billion, but they got him right out of there, though. Because yeah, now, because the NBA uh, understands his for, demographic. For decades was okay, but when he went too far in polite company with his words, then he had to go. But honestly, that little clip, which is funny as hell, uh, he seems to be a better black nationalist than Maddie Johnson is. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Ooh. <laughs> shout out to Ooh. The Shots at the God. See, I agree with that, but Jimmy always threatens no. me when I talk listen, about man, that. Listen, man. Hey, man. Listen, be awesome. Let me tell you something about me in 2017. Like, it's one of those things you say, and you know, it's mentioned in sports, the book. Like, you, you hate to meet your heroes, um, because they'll always disappoint you. Ooh. And and you recognize now with like media, where you get to see like all your favorite guys speak and give their opinions. It's kind of no. different, right? So you can no. love someone on the court or the field, but no. when you hear them open their mouth or, or you see their actions, it's like it's hard to be a fan of anyone at this point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. Think about, think and that about, brings us to think about Michael Jordan. Sure. They'll say, we want athletes okay. to speak out. Then they'll be like, well, we got a Dez Bryant interview. You're like, oh, no, 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 not him. Come on, <laughs> you know what I mean? They'll, they'll push you in that position where you're going with athletes. Because, look, honestly, and that's a community issue because we're not producing as many ropes as, as we used to. So that's yeah. more of a, you know, our collective uh, failure on that end. But I, yeah. I, I want to hit one more point before I go. Uh, the right. brother Tom, I, I think his name was, he was hitting on a lot of good points, but we got to remember this. Uh, the idea of liberalism just being uh, the evil monster over there is going to eat your food and Trump, that's not a platform. A platform for labor, a platform for economics, those are the old school uh, so-called left ideas that the Democrats have to get back to. This whole pointing at the evil guy is not going to be enough. And when we talk about voting and saying, well, people have to get up and vote, well, if we got cross check going on and we got uh, gerrymandering going on and all these other things like voter ID law, okay, where are the lawsuits? Where are the lawyers? Where's the pushback on this? So the Democratic Party cannot sit on his hands and just allow this man to keep shooting himself in the foot and think that they can just walk into office. They have to actually right. produce a platform for working class people. And if we're being honest, the neoliberalism has failed the past 30 years and conservatism has failed the past 30 years. And that's why you see the American working class who has had a raise in 30 years uh, just be upset administration after administration. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is what it is, but we got to call these people into account. Facts. All right, man. Facts. Thanks yeah, for your man. call. As you know, man, you know, we appreciate it. <laughs> Indeed, Thanks, man. Now. Have a good one. I'm going to hang back with all right, peace. Cool. You know, yeah. to his point real quick, our, our um, audience I think, is I think too a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, our, our audience is definitely thorough. But to his point, I think a lot of that went on during the election. Um, like Archface was out of this world that a lot of people thought there was no way possible because, right. you know, what I mean, so it's like they didn't build any of those platforms. Even talk, they, I, I, felt, I felt like they didn't even try um, completely. I honestly do. That's exactly what um, I thought when when he said that. I was about to say like if they haven't learned their lesson with that, you know, in the in the past year, then you know, a lesson will never be learned. It's but, like um, that. It's like that race. You go to YouTube. That race with uh, the Oregon runner and the Washington State boy when he starts celebrating yeah. because like <laughs> he thinks he's about to win the race. And the boy no, still he played himself. Him. <laughs> Yo, Congratulations, that's you played exactly yourself. What <laughs> hey, Pretty Jimmy, much. you talked about you know never you should never meet your heroes, man. So that that has to bring us to Ray Lewis and his antics. I mean, we've talked about him at nauseum, so we don't even have to spend that much time on him. But of course, he threw himself back into the middle of the conversation. Um, he was over in London with the Ravens and prior to the game when all of the team was, in, you know, they were interlocking arms and kneeling, 
he was down, but in his in his own defense, I'm not defending him. I'm talking about the media, you know, marathon that he went on afterwards to defend himself because a lot of people called him on the fact that he sat in a lot of these chairs on his last media marathon and said that he should kneel during the national anthem. So since he was on two knees instead of one, he said he wasn't kneeling in protest. He was praying for all the lost brothers and confused brothers <laughs> that he was interlocking arms with. So he basically went and throw, you know, he threw everybody under the bus that he was yo. standing yo, next to his uncle, yo. arms with yo. So yeah, that's nobody that's that's it, never meets your heroes because nobody. when Ray Lewis but played ball play game, game. <laughs> we knew that. <laughs> we knew that. And we came in here and before we walked out of halftime, I just grabbed everybody's hands and we just said no weapon as a team formed the gift that's your prosper. No weapon. Man can't control what no. God has already <laughs> I'm, I no. there used to be a time I'm a, I'm a, and be I'm a good testament because he was right there with me. <laughs> Where when this my, man played ball, arm. even that when he talked, uh, yeah, like I was ready, I was I was ready to suit up, jump into the TV, and run through a brick wall for this dude. Now, all I want to do is hit him with the brick. Like, yo, he's like a totally different person to me, man. I'm yo, honest. I'm honest inside. with our. I'm honest with our audience and our listeners, and I'm honest with y'all, Sa- so y'all can laugh at me. Yo. I've I've always talked about hero worship being a nasty and despicable thing, but I I still fall into it with athletics. And I had to correct my children because they thought Ray was their great uncle since he was my uncle. So I had to to straighten that. I had to straighten that out. And um, to another note, and and Jimmy, you know, we know spiritually we all come from from a, a different place, but we comes from a similar place. And I think that you will relate. If you read the Bible, yo, Ray Lewis, and I'm not even being funny. He is the definition of a false prophet. Yo, real talk, wow. because there are people that take what he does and note that act seriously. But if, it you, used to be. if you really examine it, clown, man. if you really examine it, he does all of this for hubris. I, I, I know it for a fact. He does all – it's always about him. And when nah, nah, B, does, nah, truthfully, nah, he, does, he, he does it to win these awards. You should be ashamed of yourself the way you yourself. He just likes being a JoJo award winner. Yo, donkey a day, whatever you want to call it. Shout out to it Charlamagne. To he be. likes to be, he likes to to win those type of awards. He had, like you said, he has to because so Shannon, you know what? Because he's, like he's been another Yo, double downer. Because Ray Lewis reads social media. He's on social media. He hears the way people talk. He hears the way his brother Shannon Sharp talks about him. So he knows right now what the American public, especially the Black American public, thinks about him. Yet it doesn't stop him from going on TV and doing the same listen, stuff. Man. No, listen, man. The great, the great, the great Egyptian prophet named Slim Charles said, "Sometimes you gotta fight on that. You gotta fight on that lie, right? When you go to war, even if it's a lie, you fight on that lie, right?" Fight so on that lie, Ray, Ray, Ray is like double down, triple down. But I don't even know if he believes it at this point or he's just fighting on that lie. But like, no, it's no, to the but listen, that, that's the it, point. Wait, hold on, Jimmy. That's the point of me. Literally, and I'm not trying to be funny. He is a false prophet because I believe that he may not believe what he says, but he knows the power that his words and his actions and that whole act, that fraudulent act, he knows that it holds sway over a large people who a Yo, group of people. But here's like, what he bothers knows. me though, B. Austin. What bothers me is like this dude. Like he uses a social media platform. Like do you guys remember the time he got in his car and. He got his um his uh I have a dream cadence on. Colin, yep. you gotta get back on the field. Mm, Let's start that doing was for that. Sure. That was awful. Yeah, but my whole thing is, but then when they question him, like it's not about me. Why do you keep asking me? You're making it about you. Like <laughs> yo, and that's what bothers me about a lot of these dudes. Yo, yo sometimes like just say nothing, or just shut up and fall back. Like that, you know what I mean? Like 
that like how, that how does, particular how does, um, that particular thing that you brought up is 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 the straw that broke the camel's back for me because he called and and, and we're making light of it right now but that was the moment in which he crossed the line for me of no return forever because he called what Shan, he called what Colin Kaepernick was doing nonsense. If you go back and watch that, no, he, he did, called he it did. nonsense. He, he called did. it nonsense. I, I can't, I can't forgive that. I can't. And Jimmy, that. he wasn't he in the car. Standing up for black, he, he called standing up for black people and and our rights. He and, and not being killed by police. He called that. Nonsense, and he is the he definition. Did, he, yeah, Jim, he, he didn't do that video from a car, though. He did that from a train. Cool train is coming. Cool train is coming. What about black? Yeah, you yeah. used to be my man. That was it. Yo, all right, that was so it. um, all right, this whole thing. So, can we all agree that Derek that Derek Brooks is the greatest middle yeah. linebacker now? <laughs> oh, all right, Derek Brooks. We going oh, that right. far down the list? <laughs> We're going that two. far down the list to get a replacement. Cover two. Cover two. You got you got Derek Brooks at number two. You tripping? <laughs> middle so middle we'll, linebacker. We'll do, we'll do that. We'll do that another time. Yeah, middle linebacker. Come on, man. Better than Singletary. Mm, better than the white boy. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Who do it, the white boy Hodge? Who do it, the white boy Yo, hold on though. You're better than the white boy Hodge. All right, yo, da- yo, Dawson always has been overrated, though. He made it. Yeah, hate yeah, it. yeah. That's one of his guys. That's like, you know, that's like Chauncey Billups. Sam Cassell. <laughs> Sam Cassell. Sam Cassell is overrated, Vishon, though. Vishon Leonard. Like, the, his favorite the way you, of all. The way you talk about him, you, you, you have, like, you guys, and, like, you know. You guys. Now, y'all honestly yo, think that Sam is overrated. Sam wouldn't no, have made you Sam's overrated. Overrated. If he didn't look like Sam's that. not overrated. You overrate Sam. <laughs> Nobody you know, else ain't rated. And I, I love Sam. But yeah, he's not. Sam ain't, you know. He's 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 on he's one of the he's one of B. Austin's guys. Ain't nothing wrong if with Sam that. wasn't if Sam didn't look like Sam, that, Sean, you don't think he wouldn't have he wouldn't have made more, <laughs> more <laughs> Austin. Yeah. Sam would have been a five time Sam was a life skin like like brother that. with green eyes. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Some stuff happened in the NBA this weekend, man. We gotta get some of this in before the homie Gus Griffin calls you in. You look his... more like ET or Gollum. What I'm supposed to get mad about that? I'm supposed to get mad about that? Sam, you are awesome. Thank you. Sam is awesome, man. He has always been awesome. All right, so um, the NBA, man. Some big stuff happened in the NBA. It's not all about kneeling, and but I'm but I'm I am curious to see what these guys do once the season oh, starts man. in less than a month. Um, didn't <laughs> well, even seem like we had an off season. Shout out to the NBA for staying relevant. But Carmelo Anthony finally has been traded. And, Got out of know, Dodge. He, he he waived his trade kicker, so I guess he liked where he ended up. Um, we all were led to believe for the past two months that it'll it will probably end up being Houston. Um, he was traded to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Inez Cantor, uh, Doug McDermott, and Chicago's 2018 second-round pick um, from OKC. And, it's, you know, that's – do y'all think, first of all – because a lot of people – I mean, they have – ESPN had Melo ranked as the 64th best player in the league, which I think a lot of people think is nonsense – but then, you know, Carmelo is the kind of guy where fans don't really like him and they just, you know, they yeah. think that kind of thing is justified just because they don't particularly care for him. <laughs> no, yeah, most, of the, most of the people I know that don't like him are even, they're even saying it's, it's BS. They're just not, they're just not riding for him. Right. Yeah, but yeah, yo, man. Listen, man yeah. I was my, about to, my, um, good. Good, I'm about to say, in my, in my, uh, in my Joff, in King Joffy Joe voice, nonsense. It's no way he's 64. <laughs> no way he's 64. I'm not saying he's top 10 right now, but no way he's 64, though. Yeah. They they got him, you know, from going from top 10 to not mention at all. But listen, I was about to ask y'all if, uh, you know, the haul that the Knicks got back was worth it, but I'm not going to ask them questions because I don't even care. 
adding God Carmelo Anthony back. to the, the the Oklahoma City Thunder along with Russell Westbrook and uh, my homie PG-13. First of all, y'all know how I get down. These are three of my favorite players on the same team. Yeah, so the PG-13 the is one of Dev's guys. That's one of Dev's right, guys. Like a, right. At the very yeah. least, this will be a team that's very fun to watch whether they live up to expectations or not. And we pretty much know this is probably going to be a one-year experiment. Um, if it if it lasts more than a year, I'd be surprised. Um, but where do you think with the, you know, with the guys that they now have, where do you guys think Oklahoma City can land in this third, third seed, and, and third getting seed. tougher Western Here's Conference? Here's the third. thing. Like, so you guys, uh, is it going to be three – Golden State. I, I still, I still, I still think the no. Spurs will be up in the mix. I got Golden State obviously at one. So I think Spurs Houston and OKC, oh, Houston and OKC are like, uh, you know, fighting for third and fourth. Um, Yo. Do I think they're better than Houston? I don't know because it's, it's all about no. to me. It's going to be all about chemistry, right? Because how how are uh, Cliff Paul and uh, James Harden going to mesh together? Chris Paul, bingo, right. he out the league. He been out the league for like four or five years, but Cliff Paul. <laughs> Um, ever, ever since he got on the escalator going down and Steph sending and went up, that's when uh, left the league and Cliff got in the league. But uh, so Cliff, Cliff is a Paul, decent. Cliff is a decent player. He ain't Chris, but he's decent. No, that's what I'm saying. But but my thing is like considering their games, like that's the thing. A lot of times with the NBA, we look at these names and we say, "Damn, such and such and such and such is on a team together," but their their games don't seem to work well. They don't blend well which is why the Warriors, to me, are as good as they are because it's not just the names they have. Yeah, it's like no, their no games complement each other. No their games complement each other. Yeah. So how, how does Cliff <clears throat> Paul and James Harden, how, do, how will they make their games complement each other if Yo, they can? They're going to score a lot of points. It's going to be fun to watch, but it's not going to matter because they're not going to beat anybody come crunch time because Cliff Paul is a loser and James <laughs> Harden wears, ye- wears Yeezys. <laughs> And has a beard that he don't shampoo and get. No, but let me ask you a question though. though. So between those two teams though, between between mm-hmm. Houston and OKC, you got OKC edge and Houston, or vice versa. Who do you have as the better team between those two? I'm gonna go ahead and give you the five. Golden State is one. Spurs are two because of Pop and the ball, the autistic ball. And number uh-huh. three is definitely the Thunder <laughs> because. When you look, why are you laughing? Boy got Asperger's, man. Come, cut it out. I'm not um, laughing at that. I'm just laughing at the joke. Listen, no, I'm, I'm trying not, not to laugh at that. that. Come on, man. No. Um, because what wait, I wait. can say about OK OKC is if you look at stars, and those guys are definite stars, borderline supers. One is a superstar. Melo is a fading. He's a quasar, and PG-13 is a is a star, and he used to be my my homie too, but. When he let the skillless bull beat him, beat him down and take his take his lunch last season, I can't I can't mess with. Him. He let skillless bull prove that he's still the best in the league with no skills. So I believe Melo can play off the ball. Got to find a way to take a shot. He can play off the ball and do what he did in the Olympics for 82 games. Which the thing that people don't realize and forget, and they because they diss dude. Melo's actual skill level is off the charts. It's only Kevin Durant is the only dude at at near that size, and obviously Kev's a little taller, that has that type of skill. Ke- Melo cannot just be that ball dominant dude, stand in the corner and knock down and be a knockdown forty one, forty two percent three point shooter. I, I I thoroughly believe that, and I, I believe that PG thirteen can play off the ball and gives you a hellacious second option to Skeletor. <clears throat> so that, See, I think it's one of those situations be where in the regular season in the NBA, talent could can can trump a lot of things. But mm-hmm. you know, once the playoffs start and, and, and the game gets slowed down a little bit and the skill level of the opponents <clears throat> ratchet up a little bit, I don't know. This is the type of team I think Carmelo would have fared better in Houston playing with a more pure point guard like Cliff Paul. Oh, well, um, yeah, I think, yeah. you know, you know, I think Russell Westbrook is the better player, but Russell Westbrook is, is not all about the slow it down, give it to Carmelo, you know, let him face up and do his thing. Um, I think that would have been something that was 
better serve um, in a Houston uniform, even though Dan Tony wants to speed up the pace himself. But, so, but here's you know, the thing. I agree. Kind of I agree. Really you know, really Melo's a great catch and shoot player, though. Yeah, but like, here's my thing. So though. Just expect, Be often. Just expect uh, <laughs> Russell's assist to go way down. There's no triple double. Um, oh, happening yeah, yeah, this year. Yeah, that ain't not, maybe not even close. Outside, outside of those two, you still got you still you still got Nene for whatever uh, he gonna give you. Why are you telling me about Bo? No, no, no. What I'm <laughs> saying is Trevor Reza. <laughs> Nene, Trevor oh, Reza. No. You got Eric Gordon, <laughs> Ryan Anderson. Ain't got no, no. <laughs> My point no, is, they have some pieces. <laughs> Yo, stop, man. They got yeah, some pieces yeah. though. Houston Ryan Anderson probably, is still there. They're definitely Trevor a Reza, deeper team. Eric Gordon. So they're a deeper team yeah. outside of that. So yeah. that's why I say I think I might edge Houston to actually okay. be it's it's between, it's, between those, it's between those two. It's between Houston and OKC. So I can't wait to see them two actually go at it um, in the regular season. Yo, so Houston, I, I'm not saying, not saying that the Thunder do either, but Houston got two dudes that choke, pause, and we give them a pass. Them bulls choke, so I, I'm not. We don't give them a pass. No, no we, we don't. No, we're not even calling them man. We're not even calling general, them Cliff. Yeah. Like we don't give them a pass. <laughs> generally, generally like speaking, Cliff. America gives Cliff Paul a pass like he's a winner. No, he That's chokes. That's because he does. He's a cute State Farm commercial, so that the, that the um, masses and the enjoy. Boy but... beard, the boy with a beard gets upset when all the gangsters from his his blood set show up, actually at the game, and he disappears. So he's not. No, nah, I don't. I, 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 mm. OKC I mean, is three to me. Yeah, but you acting like you acting like um Atlanta ain't in America. I don't give a fuck. But you acting like OKC has a bunch of dudes that um close our games. If I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, I seen Russ give up a three one lead. Um, I mean, you just talked about how your man got his uh, got his lunch I want him uh, in the playoffs. <laughs> you, just talk, you, just, you just talk about how your man just got his lunch ate in the playoffs, and 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 Melo don't even get to the playoffs. Took it to me. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, you know, but but at the end of the day, though, man, yeah, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody we talk about a bunch of losers. All right, here, here's um, the best and, question. Here's the best question I can ask you guys, right? So if we take Houston and we take OKC and we take their best players and put them together, would they still lose to the Warriors? Probably. Damn. So what are we? Who gonna check? We, who gonna? Who don't got no business? Who gonna check? <laughs> So what check we well. talking about? What are we talking about? Yo, but if you put them together, yo, that's like an all-star team. How are they going to lose it? They st- yo, they're still going to lose to the Warriors. Can't nobody <laughs> check, Clay. <laughs> hey, yo, they're still going to lose to the Warriors. You're take that best, but they're still going to lose to the Warriors, though, man. All, all right, right that's all and, I got and the last thing man. before we uh, get into Gus's uh, investment picks for the week, um, Dwayne Wade, of course, and we knew this was going to happen yeah. after the buyout from the Chicago Bulls. He cleared waivers and joined the Cleveland Cavaliers on a one-year, I believe, $2.3 million deal. Um, you know, and for the past seven years, you know, Wade Yo, man, is always been trying to favorite their, players. Uh, but LGBTQ um, and their presence in Cleveland. Man, I hope that's like Wade and, Wade and Brian. Oh, no! come on, man. That, that was <laughs> that's that's a cool man. <laughs> D Wade still um, can contribute. Like the thing is, D Wade was such a great player that um, when you watch him now, he's like you know, um, he literally uh, went from being flash to flashes because he only shows flashes of himself at this point. But he does. <laughs> he still he still, still, nah, he'll still give you nineteen a game, which means he better Bars. than Joe Dumars. But <laughs> yeah, so he still can he still can contribute. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I don't think a lot of people recognize that. And you know something but funny they had like to give him a promise. I hear of a starting spot, Jimmy, to to even have him sign. Yeah, so Earl is out, man. Out. I mean, Earl's gonna be. That's his. That's more natural for him anyway. Coming off. Yeah, Earl and the thing is, like, he's gonna start, but he's gonna he come the game four minutes in anyway. All right. You so now that now that we know that Cleveland's probably going back to the finals, um, does a does a healthy Wade if he can get to June healthy, you know. Does that put them over, the, you know, Wade and Isaiah Thomas, you know, with the additions that they made? Can that put them over the top, you know, as far as the Warriors are concerned? Yeah. If it's I mean, the Warriors that they're facing, think, because yeah, one I think of those they can beat them because if the Warriors have an injury. Here's oh, the that's, thing. That's true. 
anytime you have a LeBron team, you possibly can beat him. LeBron goes all world, um, and those guys can do just enough. They can they can beat him, but will they beat him? And will LeBron go all world? The funniest thing about this is watching like you know they're keeping their interviews. It's like when you hear Derrick Rose say, "People treat me like I'm 38. I'm only 28." And when he said that, right, I was hey, like, really "Yo, he is only <laughs> he's only yeah." That's say, Yo, that's exactly <laughs> my point. like because Damn. of his career, the way it went, I forgot that he's still a fairly young guy. Instead um, of instead of saying something instead of saying something funny about that, I'm gonna keep it a bean in my basketball analysis. I think that. My man Derrick Rose just cost Isaiah Thomas a lot of money, and I don't think Derrick Rose is going to give that starting spot up because I see him putting up nineteen and seven. Yeah, I don't see 20. that. But um, yo, he put up eighteen and six in New York, and they that ain't even in America. The, the thing is, like, I don't see that, but the, the notion of that, the very premise of that is very interesting because you do have a former league MVP. So, you know, what if he could bring that back out? And then Isaiah Thomas gets healthy and he thinks, you know, I averaged damn near 30 last year. I'm the man in the league now. Like, that would be interesting to see. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the that's, MVP, that's, that's the former MVP. MVP my or, question is this. He doesn't he'll get back to the Derrick Rose of the MVP year because Derrick Rose MVP year was playing out of his mind. Yeah, yeah. He don't even got to do I, I think he's a 19 to 20 point per game. But seven assists guy. When he said that, it was like shocking to me because in my mind, I'm like, damn, he's only 28. I, I kind of thought he was like in his mid-30s too just because of like, you know, the injuries and his careers went. Well, but if he can't, to be fair, his knees are in their mid-30s. Maybe old. Yeah, that's what somebody, somebody Jimmy, else you thought said. He you was your age. Your you had to average it out. Like, what's, what's the median if you look at all your body parts? You right. get the median so maybe, age. Yeah, Yo, the median age is like the Juan Wagner class. 41. Yo, <laughs> but my thing is <laughs> the Juan. Yo, my thing is this though. So if he can get to be that, what B Austin said, 1980, 1907, like he contribute that way. Do we, I mean, they may have something right there. You know, they have the potential to have something, but they need a lot of things to go right in terms of health and um, just like meshing as a team, like everybody else. That's the thing. Just some people on the, on the roster doesn't get it done in the NBA. Like Warriors no. have been together for like years at this point, and then they added the KD and they figured that part out. So Big right. Welvin, Big Welvin, and them dudes ain't losing to that. It don't matter. They, they, they don't get injured. <laughs> they don't see. All right, well, Jim, we're gonna we about to get into Gus's investments. <laughs> no. So, um, <laughs> Those uh those last two hot topics, John, you could just throw them in the grind when we get there after this. Yeah. So um, you know, I wasn't gonna talk about them as long as people probably expected anyway. So we can just throw them in there. All right. So <laughs> right now we're gonna uh get Gus Griffin on the line to give you guys some of his picks against the spread this week in the NFL. Gus. What's going on, man? Welcome back to the War Room. How you doing? How's everyone doing there? Pretty good, man. So Trying to get some money. How'd you do last week, man? I know the refs, you know, interfered with your your picks a little bit with that Detroit-Atlanta game. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you (laughs) noticed it because I certainly noticed it and my phone certainly (laughs) noticed it. With all my doggone investors calling me and, and, and running up on me. Hey, man, how do you do that? I, I don't get that. I don't – you know, I, so I was two, th- two and three last week. I'm one game under 500. Otherwise, I'd be one game over 500. But I'm ready to go this week, and I got four for you. All right, so we're starting with the Texans plus two versus the Titans. Yes, and as I always say, um, almost always, Two-point home underdogs, be it basketball or football, take them, take them. They're begging you to take the team, um, the, t- the team minus two, because the increments of football scoring are more certain, three, seven, ten, et cetera, et cetera. So they're begging you to do that. Take the Texans plus the two. They're going to win outright. All right. And then we got the Ravens plus three versus your Steelers. Yeah, don't remind me. Um Look, it's like Snoop Dogg said a couple years ago when they went on the street and tried to find somebody to play quarterback, saw Mallet, hey, you, come here. And then they went in there and beat my Steelers. They could be coming off life support, and they will wake up and play my Steelers like it's the last game 
in the Always. history of the of the world. And so Always. you take the Ravens plus the three, then that's what people got to understand about this. You don't do this with emotion. I mean, I hope my Steelers win, but you don't do this with emotion. If you can't if you can't look at football and the general public betting uh, uh, streams and how they're trying to make the public do it and do it and divest yourself from your emotion, then you don't need to be doing this. Ravens play. All right, so before we move on to the next game, I just got to ask you, Mike Tomlin bringing the Steelers out of the tunnel this week or no? Um, I, the word is I hear that um, they're going to, you know, do their standard thing that they normally do before – uh, the protest began, and, and I, I'm glad you asked me that because let me just say to Steeler fans, Steeler Nation, if you think that that had something to do with them losing, you haven't been paying attention. And for, I love my Mike Tomlin. I love Mike Omar Epps Thompson, Tom, uh, Tomlin, but um, <laughs> his track record of losing to bad teams is well documented, well documented. And that's the only thing about him. I can't figure it out, but they've been losing to bad teams like that for They're now 0-2 against Mike Glenn and – Oh, and two. Wow. How the hell do you? Never mind. Never mind. Y'all give me one. Mike Glenn. <laughs> Hall of Famer. Future Hall of Famer, Mike Glenn. All right, so then we got the Broncos minus three versus their division rivals, the Raiders. Yes. Um, I got Mar- I'm in my first year playing fantasy. I got Amari Cooper on my fantasy team. He hasn't been explosive yet. Maybe, uh, maybe he's, he's, he's a little banged up, so maybe that explains it. But either way, the Raiders are young. And that 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 can of whoop, you know what, that the Redskins put on this last uh, last Sunday. I don't know that they get over that right away. It's in Denver. I'll take the Broncos minus the three. All right. And lastly, uh, you did the the Kansas City Washington. You're going with the over under. I believe is uh, uh, forty nine. I'm taking the 49. under. In that one. So you're going, to, you're going to go under the forty nine. I'm taking the under. I don't, I, you know, I'm, I looked at that Sunday night game, and I was as shocked as everyone. But, you know, I don't necessarily think that was a fluke for the Redskins defense. It's not as if they um, um, played a, a weak offensive team. and uh, But for the turnovers, I don't know that Oakland scores at all. Um, so I, I, I think that I could see a 27-20 game, and that will bring it in under. All right. So those are – Gus's picks for the week. I hope you guys were listening. I hope you had out your pad and pens and you're ready to go make your investments. So <laughs> we will see how you do this week and we'll we look forward to talking to you again next week, Gus. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. No problem. Uh, Thanks for being flexible with our, you know, special start time tonight. We appreciate I that understand. as well. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right, man. Talk, Talk to you next easy. week. Right. Got to get the money, long time, no catch. That's right. All right, so, um, yeah, man, wild week in sports. And I guess it's time to move on and talk some – well, real quick before we get into what happened this week, well, what else happened this week while y'all were on the grind, uh, you guys can check out our website at warroomsports.com. Just go to the website, look around, click some buttons, do everything you can possibly do, um, if you want to talk to us now, you can enter the chat room uh, at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. So enter the chat room. Just sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't want to create an account, you can sign into your Facebook and Twitter accounts. And while you're at it, click follow to get updates and reminders about the show. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, the chat room, War Room Sports Game Time Group on the Group Me app, and wherever else during the show, text message, email, whatever. But if you want to call in and speak with us, the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline is still open. The number is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. But if you're already listening from your phone, press 1 if you want to talk. And that chat room, my bad, that actually reminds me of a question that um, Skyview One in the chat room had a while back when we were still talking about the the circus that was the NFL this past weekend. Um, His question was, what do we do? when Kaepernick finally gets a run? Like, and that's a great um, question. Who cares? I've actually been asking folks that as well. Like, is everything fine and dandy now? You know, anybody who's boycotting the league, do you stop boycotting when Cap gets a job? Or is yeah, it bigger than Because most, most people aren't committed to the revolution anyway. So, well, first yeah. off, first off, that, that would assume that you're boycotting just because Kaepernick doesn't have a job. Um, uh, 
uh, free, I, I probably won't watch even if he got a job. He can get a job with my squad tomorrow, and I'm I'm just off of it. But um, right. You know, I don't think anything changes. I mean, you know, because those that so is this, is this watch, permanent? Is this those, permanent for you, uh, Jimmy? Are you are you? I mean, honestly, football? honestly, be often it may be because what I recognize is um by not watching. I get a lot accomplished and I get a lot done. Uh, you know, uh, it's sort of like I'm claiming my time. Uh, to quote uh, Maxine Waters, because <laughs> I think I think overall, I think overall the product has been ass cheeks for a while. But since I was the age of eight, Sundays meant football to me. So that's kind of what I've done. And it's like I didn't know that I could not do it. And then once I stopped doing it, I was like, hold up, this is kind of dope. Not watching, not not being a slave to having to be in front of the two, literally. For dinner a whole day, so uh, it might be that for me because you know it's a, it's an overall conservative thing which doesn't I can't really align myself with that um, joy of just watching for the sport at this point is kind of gone. So for me, you know I don't care whether he gets a job tomorrow. I mean he proved his. Dang, um, well bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yo, and then, what and I can Jimmy say is this though. I would have to give him his props because, you know, I've known Jimmy all his damn life, and I know how big of a football fan he yeah, is. I mean, Jimmy knows how much I'm steeped in tradition. Like, I designed my damn baseball – I mean, my baseball. I designed my basement around football. So it's going to be a little bit harder for me to, to go that route. But I salute anybody, you know, <laughs> Yo. who stands for a call. But the thing is, but here's the thing. I'll be honest, I'm not one of these people that shame people that want to watch football. I, I see people all the time looking for it, and you shouldn't be watching. Because listen, if you want to watch it, you listen. This is this is a great thing about the. I don't country. believe I don't believe in shame or bullying. Yeah, listen. If you don't want to watch it, I don't, don't watch either. it. It's just that simple. I defended all you the people I mean? who didn't vote. I hated. You know, I ain't like that whole vote shaming thing. If somebody yeah, don't do believe you, in the system, they listen, don't believe man, in the system. Do you can't make it. And life, do the bottom line, <laughs> life do what makes you happy. If you want to watch, more power to you. Um. But the thing about it is, like, you know, at this point, I'm all invested in the big three in the NBA. And um, I'm, 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 uh, I'm about to hit IG. Uh, I'm hit IG. I'm going to ask him, what's up? what's up with the big seven? Can we get a big seven football league? You know what I mean? Like, anyway. Um, all right. No, question, to answer your question, have you, um, I think that nothing changes if he gets jobs. Those that are going to continue to watch, the did not won't watch. But I to me getting told. <laughs> yeah, we get getting told. I know I know for a lot of our, our sisters, um, salute to the beautiful black woman, but some of y'all have sold out and said if Kaepernick does the sweatpants challenge, y'all y'all back on. So Yo, <laughs> Yo man. Yeah, is, uh, some of y'all need to get a life and stay out of these challenges. Listen though, um <laughs> answer your question I Skyview. I mean the challenge our kids to read it. a book. Do the read a book challenge. Hey, uh, that's that book, the hashtag the book challenge. Jimmy, you, you know what I'm saying? Your audio is all over challenge. the place right now. Well, that leads Yo, to Toe, home. what are you doing? <laughs> he gets nice and clear when he starts screaming every time we tell him that, though. Toe, 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 Toe don't like my, don't like what I'm saying. Can y'all hear me, though? Can y'all hear me around? No. Uh... Yeah, nope. <laughs> you hear like every third word. Yeah, now, hear me now. All right, take <laughs> it over, Dev. All right, I got y'all. I'm let y'all know real quick what happened this week while you good folks were on the grind. And on the grind is brought to you by Direct TV, which is actually a, a subject in one of our grind topics. If you like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, including some of the most extensive sports packages offered by any service that we hear that they may allegedly be given refunds for, go to directtv.com, order yourself a better TV experience. If you call yourself a sports fan, and you got to have Direct TV. Um, my little ad libs probably just lost us that account. Anyway, uh, <laughs> a fire chief in somewhere in Pennsylvania, not necessarily in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Calls Mike Tomlin a no good nigger because mm-hmm. he didn't bring his team out for the national anthem. See, this is the kind of stuff like you know, this is what you wrong. Think. That's what oh, no, no, like, no, but no, but no. Listen, this is the type of thing like you can you can go out there and you can root for somebody 
Um, probably about four. She probably never wanted them to be your head coach anyway of the team that you rooted for. But you can go out and root for somebody every week. Uh, you probably go and defend him against all kinds of fans from opposing teams. But as soon as he does something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable, then the true feelings fly, and now he's a no-good nigger. This is the kind of stuff, like, this is what some people will never understand. You know, we talked about it earlier when Tom called in, this illusion that we have of this post-racial America. But look look how easy somebody can be set off. Somebody didn't come out and stand for a national anthem, and you're willing to go back and, and call him, you know, that kind of uh, yeah, that's just an yeah. isolated incident. That doesn't what mean we're Chicago? racist. <laughs> that doesn't You're represent right. all white people. No, what about Chicago, Dad? Yeah. What about black? What about on black, black on black crime? And then you know, Yo, the I, I want to add something. I want to add something no to the story real quick. I want to. I want to add something to the story because um. As an update to this story, um, he has since resigned, but even after he resigned, he came back out and made a statement and said that um, it's the media's fault for making for labeling him a racist because he's not a racist. <laughs> huh? Uh, you called somebody a nigger. But you got with the you, ER. You, but you with guys the ER. Say, why can't why can't I say it? Why does that make me a racist when you guys use that word? Yo, man. I don't, know. Yeah. I don't want Chicago. to defend, you know, people who say that, you know, but still, they're not calling anybody niggers. They're calling people niggas. <laughs> we can justify that. Oh, man. Man. Shout out, shout out, shout out to Dr. Or, or Narcisse ninja. for giving me a new way to express myself because I call them Libyans. What up, my Libyans? Man, this <laughs> Libyan. Libyan, Libyan, yeah. please. But anyway, man, um, so he's since resigned, but he's, he actually is blaming uh, the media for labeling him a racist. But you put it no on social whatsoever. media. And, and then after he said it. He followed it up with say, yeah, I said yes, it. I said it. Exactly. After you said it, you, you got big and bad on everybody. So don't, Yo, this you know, is why. This is why I got to salute. The media as a scapegoat. The media will do I some gotta foul salute, uh, You said it. I gotta salute Jamel Hill because she has not once said, "Yo, I've been hacked" or they misquoted me. Like she oh, basically she's going hard. is like, she's still going. Yo, she still she has yet. I think <laughs> she's like there. I think she's trying to find a way out. Like she must got another contract in her back pocket <laughs> to get like a phone call. I think like I think like ABC. You got we got this talk show for you, but you got to get out of that deal. Or NBC or one of them. Like she probably got a talk oh, show man. on the table. I think B. Austin called she and called. offered her a world sports contract that we probably really can't honor. <laughs> yeah, but he also called her and talked that million Definitely. dollars talk. <laughs> yeah, he he with that capital. We didn't realize that she's been duped, but 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 we could pay yeah. her in love because we love her. <laughs> Yo, pay but love, my thing no, is, man, well, like Cheryl Smith. Come on over to the war These cats got to stop. These cats got to stop with the um. You know, uh, they they misquoted me, and you know what I'm saying yeah. like my my stuff man, was hacked. Man. Yo, that's like when um, that's like that's like back in the day when uh, Charles Barkley um had like an autobiography and said he was misquoted. You, huh? <laughs> Yo, Yo, he you did. That, that's a true story. Who helped he him write his autobiography? His auto- he said he was misquoted in, in his biography, though. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, cuz. No. Yo, man. Come Come Charles man. theory, man. Yo, real quick, another story I want to bring up real fast is your your man Rick Pitino. Um, you know, everything is going down to NCAA. The, fed, the feds have busted up the cartel in the NCAA uh, basketball. Right <laughs> I'm going down. And, Dino you know, Brown a couple of things. Um, of Rick Pitino got caught up in the mix. You know what I'm saying? So he had to, like, you know, um, I thought he was fired, but now I'm reading that he's been put on administrative leave. Like, does that mean he can get his job yeah. back? Like, what, what, what's the situation? It kind of sounds like it, but, you know, Rick Pitino is too big to just straight up get fired after the first reports come out. So I don't know. Um, but he and his, uh, uh, the AD, Tom Jerick, has his been man. on administrative leave. So uh, we'll see where that goes. I guess, I guess administrative Here's what's leave basically means pending further investigation. Here's um, what's funny about that. So, so, um, Yesterday morning, I don't even know what day it is. They're gotta forgive me. I'm just flying back from the West Coast, and I'm like, 
a jet lag, and jet I have no idea what day it is. I but I know Jimmy that they said that. Um, you know who I was. CTE was coming. Yo, I did I not. I thought I, yo, when I, <laughs> I actually talked to Dev on a, I talked to Dev on the phone earlier, and I thought it was in the middle of a dream. I didn't realize it was a real conversation, so I woke up like, damn, I think he's on the show. I was like, I was like, yo, I think we're on the air. Like, I'm calling him, like, Jimmy, what's I was like, I think we're on the show tonight. I'm like, are we doing the show tonight? Like, I didn't even know what day it was. But anyway. Um, in the morning or yesterday morning or whatever, they said Rick Pitino is meeting. It was on. It was on the uh, news. Rick Pitino is meeting with his athletic director to talk about the situation. And then, like a half hour later, they was like, both of them got let go. I was like, yo. So their boss came yeah, up like, look, y'all can meet whatever y'all want to meet with. Y'all both got a rule. But um, <laughs> the Fed just busted it down. And as you guys, <laughs> and as you guys know, the one thing we like to give is a stat of the week. So here's a quick stat of the week for y'all. Be awesome. Pay attention to this. Be awesome. I want to hear your thoughts on this. So the feds are busting up college basketball for, like, you know, all this uh, illegal activity that's going on with recruiting. And one of the guys that I caught up was Chuck Persons, the rifleman, the NBA legend Chuck Persons. Um, assistant who coach went at back Auburn. to work for his school. He's an mm-hmm. assistant coach at Auburn. He got caught up in this. They said, my man is facing a minimum of 80 years in prison. No, that's the 80 max. years. <laughs> It's a maximum. All right, man. I drew a little bit. It's a max. It's a maximum. I'm wrong. It's a maximum. But still. Damn, I killed myself. <laughs> but hold on, but still, though. But still, though. Hey, why go to though? trial? Seriously, if you're facing a minimum, you know you did. Yo. Yo. Why, 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 they so 80, why they so 80 years in my man for, like, trying to get kids to come to the school? Yo, but the thing is, like, the head coaches, you know, they're not threatening Patino with 80. Like, Yo, because he's you know they trying to they, 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 they trying to get Chuck the roll. They trying to get him to snitch on everybody. Yo, I would definitely <laughs> if Chuck turn person go down. I'm taking a whole lot of people with me. Damn, rifleman. Yo, so my thing is like, eighty years though, be awesome. You know what I'm saying? You got you got to give me a opinion on that. Yeah, that's a little bit disrespectful. Bro. Yo, I would turn into Alpo, Nikki Barnes. <laughs> I give you somebody in DC, but I ain't giving you nobody. I ain't telling you, I ain't yo. I'm not giving you nobody in Alabama, but I tell on some cats in Georgia. Um, <laughs> yo, I, if I'm facing eighty, I, I don't understand that, and I know we're we're making light of it. I damn sure I'm laughing. Why did the rifleman talk so much ish, and all he could do was shoot at six nine? Cause he had a legend. Yo, he was nice though. He was ish nice talk. though. Um, he was an ish talker, but he wasn't. He was, scared. He was, he was one he of those. Nice. Gym, he was nice for a very short period of time, but back he then was nice that was a time, you know, get a nickname to get your uh, get a few posters. You know what I mean, all right, I got a, I got a, I got a quick, quick eighties verses for y'all. Chuck Persons or Terry Cummings? Terry. Yes, Terry was a better all around player, but Chuck Terry was more could, excited Terry to watch because Chuck could light your ass up from the arc. But Terry Look, was be a off, better to player my, in his prime. But to Chuck my was point about eighty player. years, here's why I don't understand that, man. Like I, mean, I was telling the though. brothers on the, on the <laughs> I was telling the brothers in the group chat earlier, right? I got a cousin and I and listen, I'll never put your name out there. I never I'll, I'll never mention your name, I promise, respect. Jay Z voice. But uh Yo, he he caught a body, um, some boy holding money. I was and he just like, about to get the same example. I was just yo, about he, to. Get, I yo, know yo, he, he, he caught, caught body. Yo, this is, this is. I don't hang with him. This is family. Like you can't pick your family. Like, but I got I got a couple. I got a couple cousins that did. That's either here or there. I'm not. Let me stop talking like that. But he. But this is a fact though. This is an actual fact. Fact though. Fact. Yo, fact it though. Ain't <laughs> it ain't Chuck. Yo, not. It's definitely not Chuck. It's a fact though. He's like 14, and he's home. And he a pastor now, but that's another story. Um but, now with Ray. Yo, but I know a lot yo, a lot of dudes I know that come home get into the church, but that's either here nor there. Um my point is he wasn't even facing eighty years. Like eighty years? Yo, you get more time for messing with the NCAA money than you do for killing someone in America. Well, you know how it is. He got a bunch of charges, so they're just gonna stack with each Stack charge up. is is worth and tell you that you know he he's facing corruption fraud bribery um, you know but th- that's the thing like like how much do they really care about Yo, this? Or, or all I got really to all I could really say something this, in college basketball all I, all I could really say to this is free max b yo <laughs> 
Yo, yo, um, <laughs> real quick, real quick though. Let's. I want to get this in before we uh, finish. I want to get you guys' opinion on this. Um, one of our coward. I mean, one of our sponsors. Uh, um, has uh, if you feel offended by the NFL protest, they're allowing people to have refunds for their Sunday tickets. Um, I need we, them to refund. Have we I'm vetted offended. this? Have we vetted this? Is this real? Because I've heard it for the last two three days, but is that real? Well, I guess I mean, I'm, I I, know, I'm I in the best place to speak about it. I could just make a call and find out. Um, yeah, that's yeah, the thing. There's no way, here's my question. There's no way here's my that question. you're not offended by the cowardice that was shown by the players for not kneeling earlier with Kaepernick. So you can play that the way that you're offended. No, and, and this is what I'm – yeah, exactly. But I may or may not call and try to get in on this refund. But what I want to know is if you call in and say that you're offended and you get a refund, do they keep your Sunday ticket on or do they take it away? Oh, I don't know. Cause they, I don't know. Cause if, but, they um, it, if they keep it on, then I'm really offended. You know, that all you jungle bunnies want to put your knee down while my flag is being flown. Um. Yo, here's the thing, though. It, it, it is real. I'm looking it up. It is real. It's been reported by, like, pretty much every major news outlet, including, like, uh, ESPN. So, um, I, it's a I real need thing. To find out. I need to find out if they're just giving refunds and letting you rock. Here's one of the most interesting, here's one of the most interesting things. Here's one of the most interesting things. Um, but with the snow says, all Snopes does is check. The Snopes say is real or false. So. Snopes just go to TMZ and check. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so here's my thing, though. Here's my thing, though. What, what I find interesting about what's going on overall is people like to like dismiss Kaepernick and and kind of say, um, you know, he didn't do anything or he doesn't mean anything. But what he started is 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 still a, around and it'll be around forever. And what's interesting about it is he's having like Fortune 500 companies. He's like they're at this point in the world, they're being forced to take a side. When in the business, that's the one thing you don't want to do. To quote Michael Jordan, Republicans buy sneakers too. Like you don't want right. to have to It'll take a side. On you. But now, but now they're being forced to take a side, which I find interesting. Like, yo, we got we got to protect Cap. We got to save him, man, because businesses don't like that, yo. They don't like to have to take a side. No doubt. All right, well, I know you're about to take us up out of here. So before you do that, let me just give some very, very quick birthday shout outs. And y'all know the birthdays are always brought to you by Digital Extreme Technology. Do you or your business need a custom website for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions? You need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank. For an effective online presence, top quality results-driven websites at incredibly affordable prices, and financing options are available. So visit DigitalExtremeTech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to tell them that War Room Sports sent you. So real My quick, birthday. happy Yay. birthday shout-out to uh, Ryan Zimmerman. He turns 33, a Mecca Okafer. Turns 35, Anderson Mom. Barajal. He turns Mom. 35, Jose, Cal- Jose Calderon. He turns Mom. 36, Jake Reed. He used to line up across on the other side from Chris Carter. He turns 50, Johnny Damn. Dawkins is 54, Irving Fryer is 55. Is Irving Fryer in the pen yet? Steve Largent is 63. Steve Largent used to hold every – Go. Wide receiving record there was before Jerry Rice stepped on his toes. And uh, shout out to Lou Pinella who turned 72. And stole his chicken. So before we get out of here for the show, we'd like to give a, a, a War Room Sports salute to all these folks on their birthday and their My birthday, birthday week. Yay! Salute! Let's get the hell out yes, of here. Yes, yes. It's time Take for us to get out of here. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Thank you, brothers and sisters. For joining us for another briefing in the war room, oh, shout out to everybody in the chat room, you see? Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> the game time the app, anybody who participated, no. <laughs> <laughs> anybody who participated in the show Play in any manner, we want to love. Join us next week, same place, and same back channel. Masters honor. <laughs> and as we always say, listen, man, everything we do can be found in one location. That is war room sports. Dot com. Enjoy your week. If you're watching football, enjoy it. If you're not watching it, enjoy your family. Um, but as we always say, cop my book and don't accept mediocrity. <laughs> steadfast in the war against ignorance. And we'll see you jump to the top.
Then he played the family card on you. <laughs> <laughs> Young Jones. Can you check? Can you check? Know the blueprint Yo. Every Thursday, 6 to 8, they do this Shout out to Dez PJ Be off and Doc Bay on replay uh. Warroomsports.com Get that mobile app If not dial Call it 323 working double O twelve. They be going and you sensitive Then oh well yeah. Physical podcast, the tough sports uh. Showtime like magic in the block push magic. Listen to live Push one to join in. Rip your team or listen for your enjoyment. Get hop dollars, pit stop and knowledge. Should be in sports credit as I ain't talking college. Five guys, no beef though. Sports grit, beef grit, but the streets know. Bellafani, I got a G flow. KC, royalty, I'm in beast mode. Two hours, get your game up. Who's the best in sports cast? You better name us. What real sports? War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it.